Who are you? Who's he? I'm the player to be named later. In Ron Shelton's stellar directorial debut, an aging catcher that goes by Crash Davis is brought to a minor league team to steer a hotshot rookie pitcher Nuke Lelouch in the right direction. Nuke has a million dollar arm but a five cent head, and it's up to Davis to turn them into major league material. This is hopeless. This is utterly fucking hopeless. Their relationship gets off to a rocky start, and things get even more complicated when both men start vying for the love of the irresistible Annie Savoy, a groupie for whom baseball is a religion, and who every season chooses one player to sleep with and help him achieve his full potential. Bull Durham is technically a baseball movie, one that certainly features all the usual elements of a film of this nature. But in the middle of players being concerned with pitching and hitting, winning and losing, and getting called up to the show, there's a strong current of spirituality that taps into why baseball captured the imagination of sports fans for so many decades and ended up being branded as the American pastime. Ron Shelton used his knowledge as a former minor league infielder to not only add a layer of truth to the representation of baseball culture and film, but also to bring the supernatural element of the sport to the fore, in the process throwing into the mix quantum physics, Walt Whitman, and a variety of other poets, singers, and artists. Have you ever heard about Walt Whitman? Who's he played for? He sort of pitches for the Cosmic All-Stars. Never heard of him. Oh, good. Listen to this. To Shelton, baseball has as much in common with a sport as it has with art and religion. It's certainly no coincidence that there's a holy trinity at the center of the frame. Crash as the father, Nuke as the son, and of course, Annie as the Holy Spirit. Shelton has a profound respect for the process and for the players and their God-given talents. Despite keeping things upbeat and lighthearted, Shelton's focus really is on the dark side of the fanfare, on the one who was good but never quite made it. Like in religion and art, baseball too can be profoundly unjust, and Crash Davis is living proof of that. He has the brains and even made it to the show, for 21 days anyway, as he likes to say. 21 greatest days of my life. But it wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough. Worse, the brains, according to Annie, function only as a twist of the knife. The world is made for people who are incursed with self-awareness, she says. Bull Durham never loses its charm and never stops being funny, but it can also be remarkably poignant. Costner is quietly devastating, delivering a movie star performance that anchors the film emotionally. The psychology of Sarandon's department, she's an absolute powerhouse, grabbing the screen with vivacity and magnetism and charm and intelligence. It's one of her very best performances. And Robbins, well, he's having the time of his life. It's the most fun part of the movie, but perhaps the hardest one to pull off. However, Robbins in this fascinating and complex physicality and vacant stare knock it out of the park. Pun very much intended. Yet, despite all the brilliance in this play, the real standout is Shelton's script, with its orgasmic dialogue, witticisms, and excellent character development. Shelton always seems to find ways to keep things moving along while still reaching for the truth in every scene, and he never finds it at the expense of clever dialogue or situational comedy. Instead, the various elements are masterfully interweaved, and the result is one of the best sports movies ever made. Film critic Jonathan Rosenbaum wrote that Bull Durham evokes the films of Howard Hawks, and it's hard to disagree. It has that same energy, that same pathos, that same collection of colorful characters in search of something meaningful in their lives. And like most of Hawks' work, it's damn good. I fucking quit.